Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Gate Arena. I am Dr. Prashant Padjai and today we are going to design and understand an obstacle avoidance robot. A small but intelligent machine that can sense, decide and move on its own. You can think of it like creating a tiny mechanical friend that can see, think and move all by itself. So to make this fun and easy, I will try to explain each part of the robot by comparing it to part of our own body. So let's start. So when we are talking about an obstacle avoidance robot, it's like a caution that human walking through a crowded area. So basically when we are talking about this obstacle avoidance robot car, what we mean that when we are moving into that crowded area, the human constantly look ahead and notice the object in its path and decide which way to turn around. So in a similar way, when we are talking about this obstacle avoidance robot car, what we are saying that when this robot will going to find a obstacles in its path, it will going to change their path, either turning to the back, left or right using their motors. We will going to start with what are the robotics component required to make your obstacle avoidance robotic car. So in this, we will going to tell you each of the component that are being required as well as we will going to tell the functionality of that robotic components comparing it with the human body. The first and the most important part of our robotic car is the Arduino Uno board. This is also considered as the brain of our system. As we all know that every human needs a brain to make a decision. In a similar way, our robots also need a brain and that brain is our Arduino Uno board. We can use other board also, but here in this lecture, we are talking about Arduino Uno boards. Just like our brain process information and make decision, the Arduino processor sends data and decide what the robot should do the next whether it has to move forward, it has to take a decision to move left or right or has to move backward. Everything will be done with the help of the this Arduino Uno board. So this is the brain of our system. Now, the second component that we required for our robotic car is the ultrasonic sensor which act as an eye of our robotic car. Just like a human, we use our eyes to see these ultrasonic sensors perform in a similar way. We can say that these are the eyes of a robotic car. They work by sending the waves and wait for them to bounce back. Just like a bat who used to navigate in the dark. So, these are the eyes of our robot. They see by sending out the waves, waiting for them to bounce back and calculate how far away an obstacle is from the robot. Now, the third component that we are using in our robotic car is the servo motor, which acts like a neck of our motor. So, as a human, we use our neck to turn our head and check if the vehicles are coming from the left or right or even glance slightly behind while crossing the road. Our robot uses the servo motor to do the same. Uh, the servo motor act like its neck, turning the ultrasonic sensor left and right to scan its surrounding. And just like us, if it see an obstacles in front, it also decided to change its path to avoid a collision. So this is the function of a servo motor. 
So the next component that is being used in the robotic car are the motor drivers. So here we have used the L298N driver but you can use the other motor driver as well. So basically when we are talking about this motor driver they are also considered as the nervous system of our human. Just like the nervous system we have got the nerves carrying signal from brain to your muscles. The motor drivers carries the Arduino instruction to the motor. It controls how and when the motor should move. It will going to drive the motor. Therefore, it is known as the motor driver. The next component that we will be using in our robotic car is the TT geared DC motor. These motors act as the muscle of our robotic car. We say that these motors are the muscles that make our robot to walk, turn or spin. These are the muscles that move the robot forward, backward or turn it left and right. It is like similar way our human body when we are walking our muscle provide us the strength. These motors are providing the strength to the robotic body to move. The next component that we are using in our robotic car is the wheels. We have got four wheels that are being attached to the four TT geared motors. So basically we can say that these wheels will going to act like the legs of our robotic system. As we human use these legs to move into the particular direction in a similar way we can say that these wheels will going to allow the robots to move and it will going to either move into the forward direction, backward direction, left direction or right direction depending upon the instruction given by the brain of our robotic car that is the Arduino Uno. Now the most important part of any human body is the skeleton. This skeleton is the strong frame which are being used by our body to hold all the part of our body together. In a similar way what we are saying here is that we are using the chases in our robotic car that act as a skeleton of our robotic car and it will going to hold all the parts together in a proper shape. So this is the functionality of using the chases in the robotic car. And now we have come to the very very important part of our human body which is known as the herd. As these herd are very very much responsible for the human to live to provide the oxygen to the human body. In a similar way we have got a uh, batteries that are being used in our robotic car. These battery is the herd that pumps energy to every part of our robot. This is the herd that pumps energy to the entire body of the robotics whether it is your Arduino you know or your motor drivers etc. so that it can function properly. If the battery level is down your robotics car will not going to work. Therefore we can say without it nothing will going to work. Like without your herd you will not going to live in a similar way if you are not having a good batteries in your robotics car it will not going to function properly or it will not going to run. So that is very important and considered as the herd of our robotic system. In the last we require some wires. It can be your jumper wires or other normal wires male to male wires, male to female wire, female to female wires depending upon the requirement you are having. We will be using the jumper wires and even the normal wires for designing our robotics car. So we can say that these wires are acting as the blood vessels. These jumper wires are like the vein and the arteries which are being used to carry power and signal between the brain that is your Arduino you know, your muscles, the motors, 
your sensors, ultrasonic sensors, servo motors, and etc. So you have to connect each and every component with the help of these wires. So these wires are very, very important and they are being considered as the blood vessels like our human body have got. And finally, we have got the assembly components that are being used to mount the hardware. So we have got some of the screwdrivers, nut and bolts to hold the ultrasonic sensors, the frame structure to the chases. We will be requiring some mounting hardware that are available in your robotics kits. With these all components which we have discussed, we have discussed each and every component that is being required for you to design your collision avoidance robotic car and you will be able to design a car which you can see right now on your screen so you will be able to design the car like this so in the next video we will going to talk about how to assemble a robotic car step by step and we're going to explain you each and every step there so that you can also design your robotic car at your home thank you everyone have a good day bye bye and we will going to see you in the next video in which we will going to talk about how to assemble your robotics car till then take care have a good day